Hi, it's Steffi from Kaleidostomy, and I have Rachel from Rocking Two Stormers. And to help kick off her Understanding Your Ostomies series, um, I thought we could do a little one-to-one -one interview because I'd love to know more about your ostomies. So I'll just hand you over to Rachel so she can tell you a little bit about herself. Thank you, Steffi. Um, okay, so I'm Rachel and I'm a double bagger. So I have a uostomy and an ileostomy. I have been, I've had my ileostomy five years ago and my uostomy two years ago. And I have a blog called Rocking Two Stomas. So I um, started that in January and I've really enjoyed it. And I've recently started a new series called Understanding Uostomies. So to try and get to try and get more people and more ostomates aware of uostomies and to help with uostomy awareness. So this is what our interview is about, just to learn a bit more about uostomies and and yeah, just for some awareness. So how come you have your uostomy? Well my my situation is quite complicated, but I so I have I have um a rare condition called pure autonomic failure. So my bladder, my bowel stopped working. My bladder stopped working first, and it was um, it started by I kept having loads of U UTI infections, and then I had retention, and I self catheterized. Then I had a urethral catheter, and then I had a suprapubic catheter for it was the two catheters it was over seven years, and I had the suprapubic for six years, and I, I then decided I, it was then decided that I had to have the bladder removed and the ileoconduit formed because it was just I wasn't living it was horrific the life with the suprapubic catheter was just awful and and it, it I just would I just was I was surviving that was it I was just I was broken mostly spiritually mentally I was just broken and the uostomy gave me back the freedom you know and and, and yeah so what is a suprapubic catheter because you've mentioned it a few times but I have no idea what it is Okay, so there's there's three, there's really there's three different types of catheters. You've got um, intermittent catheterization, which you have a little a little tube and you put it into your urethra and you just empty it when you need to go and then you throw it away. So that quite a lot of people use them. Then you've got urethra catheter, which goes through the urethra, and um, then they they inflate a balloon and you wear like a leg bag on your leg and a night bag at night, and then the suprapubic catheter goes between the suprapubic bones, so it's where you've got down there, the, where the pubic bone is quite low down, it goes in between the pubic bone into the bladder, and that's the suprapubic catheter. So out of all of them, the urethral catheter was the hardest, but the suprapubic wasn't, isn't a lot better. It, it causes a lot of problems with with um, spasms, and like it felt like it just wanted, I just wanted to give birth to the catheters. See, the only times I've had anything to do with catheters was when I worked in just um, adult care. Right. Obviously. Um, and I've helped put catheters in. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, well, the nurse did it, but I was, I was, I was, see, I was on that got clawed at because it was a poor lady with dementia and she didn't know what was going on. Um, and I used to have to change night bags and stuff. So that's as much as my, like, catheter knowledge. Obviously, other than having them, because I've had bowel catheters as well. But other than that, that's as much as I knew about that. So is it, I think you said before, there's different types of uostomies, mm -hmm. like the way it's there's, formed. There's different types. So the, a uostomy is a urinary diversion. So there's different types of urinary diversions. So you have, you have temporary urinary diversions, which are catheters, you know, urethral, intermittent, self uh, superpubic catheter. And then you have, um, you've got, incontinent urinary, di urinary diversion, which is in other words called a uostomy. Um, the medical term for that is an ileoconduit. And a lot of patients that that come to me or a lot of new ostomates that come to me and ask me for information or to, to connect with somebody actually ask me like, they didn't realize that it's also called a uostomy. So a lot of the medical terminology use an ileoconduit. And then you have an, a neobladder which can be formed um, they're part of continent uostomies and a neobladder is a little bit of bowel is used to expand the bladder and then there's um, an indiana pouch which is in a continent uostomy and that that is a, again used a bit of the bladder when you self-catheterize into the stoma and so you don't need an external bag 
each have their own their own sort of positives and negatives some work really well for some people some don't you know it's kind of but the the rostomy is in regards to the iliochondria okay so how long have you had your aspa i had two years so i had mine um yeah it was two two years ago and it was the best decision i ever done that's good because we've got graham because our lovely loyal graham he's watching and he lovely. said he currently self catheterizes every four hours and he may need to have a urostomy in the future right. I, as far as i'm aware and i'm pretty sure he has to have botox in his bladder at the moment Help yeah us. i've been talking to talking to graham quite a bit a bit about it about because it, some some patients have to have the decision whether to have to decide to have it have a urostomy or a neobladder or an indiana pouch and it's it's a minefield it's like you know i couldn't just explain sit here and explain them all like i've got blog posts about each one but there, there's a facebook group urostomy awareness which graham's part of and it's a really good group and it it does you know you get to have people's some people it's worked really well neobladder indiana pouch uh, iliochondria or urostomy and you you just kind of work out which one's best but the botox i i never had botox in my bladder but for some people it works really well and other people they find that after a few goes it it their the bladder becomes a bit lever and they have problems um do you find certain i found I feel like i'm just listing questions but do you find certain foods affect it we we had a funny discussion last week, didn't we, about um and I, I wrote a little blog post about uh, what foods what foods can affect you asked me generally diet shouldn't be affected so usually in, unless you've had any other medical issues going on or like me have an ileostomy or any other bowel issues diet shouldn't really change it however there are some foods that can uh, alter the smell alter the amount of mucus in in the in the ileochondria because a bit because the iliochondria is a piece of bowel that is used to form to, to form which is then attached to the two ureters are attached to it and urine goes into it and collects into a pouch on the outside there, there's quite a lot of mucus that will be present in in the in the urostomy and some foods can make this worse and um, can change the smell if you if your you urostomy is too um alkaline it can cause problems with um crystallization and can can cause a few complications so it's ideal to have your your urostomy to be more acidic so around like acidic is about ph ph one to six so around, around you, then is how would you be able to test that or how you, do you know that i think most of us who have had a lot of urology problems have actually have a dipstick like a little dipstick pot that we we the, the the little like litmus almost like litmus test you know where the, you can test for infections so you can dip that in and that I'll say about the pH level but generally what I've researched recently is that the majority of our diet anyway is acidic because most most people should should be having an alkaline the urine should be alkaline however for your osteomates it's it can cause us more problems so you can have crystals that form around the stoma which some some people use vinegar to help get off the skin um, it can cause quite quite a few issues and then also the more alkaline you have urine the more chances is chance of infection so it's good to keep it because when it's acidic the bacteria doesn't grow as much so if someone does have a more alkaline urine how is it just a case of eating more acidic things or yeah there's a few things you can do you can eat um so let me let me get this correct so for acidic urine is if you eat more meat, um, eggs, fish, protein, that will help you get your urine more acidic. Alk what makes your urine more alkaline is like vegetables, cauliflower, those kind of things. Um, citric drinks can make it. Um, drinking cranberry can help make your urine more acidic. It also helps with any bacteria, although to be honest, I don't drink cranberry juice. I hate the taste of it, I hate it. And you need to be careful because if you are taking warfarin or any medications that fill in the blood, it can affect. Um, it can affect. You need to check with your medical profession. But cranberry, I think a lot of us, it's one of those old wise tales, which I think there's some truth in it, like why cranberry juice works for urinary tract infections. But when you get to our level, I think it's it kind of doesn't really. It might it may prevent it a little bit, but it won't stop any infections. Um, I have a question for you. Okay. It says, 
Does your ostomies work all the time or are there times when the bag is empty for a few hours? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say for me, mine works all the time. So I, I drink a hell of a lot though. I drink about three litres, you know, Steve jokes how much I drink when I'm with him because I just constantly have my frozen water and I drink a lot. But um, yeah, I, I in the morning, it's it's a bit more empty than usual. And that's when I would advise it's best to change your eurostomies in the morning because you find that the, it's not as active. But mine, I, I empty my eurostomy far more than my ileostomy. And at night, I always attach to a night bag because that I would be getting up every couple of hours if I wasn't. And it's 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 the, one of those big questions regarding the night bag because I know quite a few people that don't attach to a night bag. However, it is advised and doctors do advise it because in and you sleep through and your bag's full they could be reflux or backflow to the kidneys so it's better to to attach to a night bag but it's a personal preference it, you know if you have a night bag as you know you get tied you're tied to the bed you can't roll around you know problems like that it can be difficult um, that's a good question what about can you get can you get leaks then the same as you can with the other ostomies yeah, it's exactly the same. I, I find that my I get more wet with my urostomy leak, you know, because with an ileostomy, because it's, it's an element of thickness to it. It kind of doesn't just go everywhere it contained. But with my urostomy, when it goes, it just goes. But I use, so I use my um, my trusty um, Brava extender tape on both of my, my stomas, and it really, really helps. It um since using these i have far less leaks in my urostomy but some at one point when my urostomy retracted in quite a lot because quite a lot of urostomies from what i've noticed are retracted uh, far more than ileostomies most ileostomies are, are quite a bit out but quite a lot of urostomy people have these com retracted sometimes completely retracted and you can't even see the stoma so I, I, whether that's the the type of surgery they use it's quite that's quite fascinating actually to find out about that but um, and then a, a lot of people do use convex for that if it's been prescribed and that can help that can help with um, with leaks or anything like that. So what does your urostomy your bag look like? Okay so mine I use can you see so I yep. use the Colaplast Sensura Mio and if it, I haven't got any because I'm, I'm actually in Wales at the moment so I haven't got any of my other if you use a urostomy, this is actually quite a different shape to the usual ones, and it's actually quite a lot bigger. So compared to my ileostomy, it's a lot bigger. But the reason why I like the the Colaplast me is I, li I like the colour because it matches my ileostomy. But I also like that it's quite because they've got these two pockets here. It kind of spreads the urine out, so it doesn't feel like it's dragging down and pulling down. So it's quite flat to your skin. So that 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 was a really good, and I, I just I like. I like how the base plate sticks for me and I just find that it works very well. I, I prefer bungs, so these bits here, you can either have a tap or a bung, so I've decided that I much prefer the, the bungs because with the taps I forget which one's on and which one's off, whether green is on and th there was one review I did, I couldn't remember, I didn't work out which was green and like green was off and red was on and it just confused me. So I you prefer think they got the bungs. The, do you think they got it the wrong way around? <laughs> Maybe, well, I think it maybe, but it was just very bizarre because I just for ages couldn't work it out. But I, I do prefer the bungs. It's annoying when when you get yours to me bags. It's to remember that most of them the bungs aren't done up, so you have to remember to put it on. The amount of times I've changed my bag and it's and I've leaked all over my leg and and um, yeah, it's, it's been it's happened quite a lot. So it's just remember to just pop that back in. But the ostomy is. Um, really good and the other thing that i use is my so i've got i use the um the k-line e4 night bags the reason why i use these is because i use these for my catheter so for me using a night bag was no different because i i had a catheter for so many years so i just used to using a night bag some people who have um eurostomies due to bladder cancer may find night bags quite unusual and and not not like them but i was quite used to it so this here is a night bag, as Steffi already knows, because she's, so that's night bag, and um, it goes on a little stand, which I've got, which I've got here, that I made earlier, this is my little stand, 
And the most important thing with a urostomy is that generally, depend if you have the same product as the same bag product as a night bag, they can fit together. However, like it is important, like most of them don't, so you need an adapter to attach them. So when I get when I order my my urostomy bags, every every pack will have. So this is the adapter here. We'll have the adapter attached in. So this just fits at the end of the bung like that. And it's tight to start with. And then this bit here goes on that bit there. And that just makes it more secure. And each each product will have its own connector. Um, one little note about the connectors is they are gold dust when you go into hospital so please remember to bring them with you because it's a nightmare the amount of times i haven't had them with me or i've lost them misplaced them and i've had to get get nurses to go to different wards to get different connectors to i have had to change it but a completely new bag to get a connector to put the night bag on it's just best to have your little emergency bag have your emergency go into hospital suitcase ready which is always useful i think to have and then put it in there and then you know it's in there because the amount of times i've I've had nurses chasing around and and there's like another good point that i've had a lot of people come to me is the amount of the amount of lack of knowledge of urostomies in hospitals is just ridiculous and it's it's really it which is why i started to do my urostomy awareness poster was because of the lack of awareness it it upset me because the amount of times I had, I they thought my urostomy was a catheter, and I had to explain that I don't have a bladder, and they just didn't understand. And it, there's a real big lack of awareness, I think, and that I would love to eventually try to address. I think that's quite shocking if you're a, if you're a nurse. Mm. Um, like I just even if it was just like a basic, the tiniest basic knowledge, like I'd have thought. If you're working on a ward, should I say, like, but not necessarily a &E, because a lot of people seem to think that a &E nurses are specialists, they're not the general nurses, because they've mm -hmm. they encounter everything. Um, but we have... So the, the adapters, are they one use only? Um, no, the, so the night, the night bag um, is advised to change every seven days. And with the adapter, I do leave mine on and change it every seven days. You know, you don't have... There's, I think there's three adapters in each, in each pack, in each pack of urostomy. So I, I sometimes I will wash mine out, um, but I, I wouldn't go more than seven days of of using a night bag because there's more risk of infections. No, no, the adapter. Oh, the adapter. No, that's that's um, the adapter. I change that every seven days when when I change the night bag. So you don't have right. that many with you, like given out to you. So I usually change that every seven days. Oh, so the gold dust in the supplies as well then yes they are <laughs> in hospital because that was the first thing that my nurse said is like they are like gold dust and and lots of people it i don't know it 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 frustrates me i think the lack the it's not the lack of awareness but it's more that i nurses would avoid coming over to me and would see me last or maybe not come straight away because they don't know about the stomas or they may have heard of an ileostomy colostomy but don't really know about the urostomy like trying to a, a good point is about there's a big debate over how you take a ure, how you take a urine sample and there's a, a huge debate about it but most of the literature say and doctors say that you should take a urine sample from the spout itself so you remove your bag and you sit there and you catch you catch the urine now when you're really poorly or you're septic like the amount of times i've been septic last year and you have to get a urine sample and I'm, you're poorly and you're trying to catch it, it's just, it's not, it doesn't, it's maybe not very realistic. So in that case, sometimes you can put a new pouch on and then collect the sample from the new pouch, but that's not really ideal. So it's better to catch it from, from the spout. But in re realistically, if you're really poorly, it's really hard to do that because sometimes I've been there an hour trying to catch the urine out of the pouch. So it's, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. Um, with being a double baggage, you have to double drink double the recommended amount. Ooh, I I think I do naturally drink 
a lot more so possibly you do have to drink more anyway when you have a ureostomy and when you have an ileostomy you have to drink more so i think i'll just kind of maybe i i drink the amount that i need to with both of them like I'd probably drink about three liters i would say but i noticed that i do i i think mainly to my ileostomy i crave salt a lot like when i'm really craving it and when i'm really depleted in that i do I can taste it in chocolate. I can taste it in normal foods. It's really strange, and that's when I know I'm really depleted. But yeah, I, I would I would say I probably do double my double double my um, drink because when I when I reduce down and I don't drink so much, there's more chance of like I've got a kidney infection at the moment, and I'm sure that's down to not drinking that much. So it's really important to keep the your fluids up. So, whereabouts is your your ostomy situated is it like under your belly button or slightly across so i'll show you <laughs> trying to go back a bit so mine is can you see yep. Steffi? okay so so this is my ostomy here mm -hmm. so that's my ostomy so mine mine is just a tiny bit under my so my belly button's there and my ostomy is there and then that's my ileostomy so as you can see the ostomy is a lot bigger the bag than the than the the um, ileostomy, but most most other types of stomas for ureostomies are the same size as the ileostomy. So Perloplasts are the first first people I think that have actually designed a bag that is more this shape. Mm. Do you find the bowl? Oh, excuse me, Jacob had me up last night. <laughs> um, do you find that the bung is awkward on your leg at all then? Because yeah. with like my ileostomy bag, some, depending on which bag it is, it can get quite scratchy on the opening of the spout for that. And obviously the bung is very different. Mm. Yeah, you, you can. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, actually. I've never really thought of that. It, it does scratch. It doesn't scratch as bad as my ileostomy, but it does scratch. I find that some underwear, the pouch is too big for, and it, it kind of folds over, especially this bit here. But there is... I'll just take a look at it. So this bit here, I don't know if you can see, there's there's a little hole with where you can poke it poke it in. So. Oh, that that's like a trademark of um colour plastic, isn't it? Because you can do that with the ileostomy meals you, as well. Yeah, you can and you can poke it in like this. So I I I tend I'm lazy, so I don't I just I, I empty so much I just leave it leave it out but you can sometimes if I want to fit into the knickers I will will put it up like that does it um affect your personal relations with partners I knew she's gonna say this <laughs> okay how do I answer this I if you're wearing a night bag and you're in the middle of the night and things get a bit you know you're hugging and things get a bit like you you want it to go further and you're attached to your night bag it can be a bit frustrating because many times i've gone to roll over and back with my night bag so i but the i just un unhook it really quickly and it's fine so it's it's not an issue that that side of my my life regarding stomas is isn't isn't an issue I, i'm quite comfortable um so i but some people some people find that after they've had surgery they have to wait a while and because they don't feel up to doing it or they're worried about what their partners think of the bags. And I think the key the key to all of it is communication. It's communicating with your partner and it's communicating how how you feel and how how things have changed. And, and usually it's I found that it's mainly us that have have the kind of issues than the partners because usually when I feel don't feel very sexy or I think the bags to put me off it's it's a load of rubbish because it's not what what the person I'm with sees you know it's just how my perception of it and sometimes we can taint it by by doing the other person's thinking and I think it's just being honest and open with your partner and you know some people still struggle to have a sex, sexual relationship with any stomas I think and some people are fine with it and I think the key is just is communicating and being able to have that confidence where you can talk and because it, it it is it's an important aspect of life you know because we have stomas we shouldn't have to not take part in that mm -hmm. so is there certain clothes that you don't feel comfortable wearing because of either of your bags actually because obviously with you having two it's a little bit more awkward or it could be um not now now, like I, I Steffi knows I wear jeans. I wear maxi dresses are my favourite because they're the most comfortable with 
with two bags, they're free in. I like maxi dresses. But back when I had my ileostomy five years ago, I was so mentally low. I was so just distraught, before, especially before I had my ureostomy. I just wore black. I wore leggings. I wore jog jogging bottoms. I wouldn't wear jeans. I wouldn't put makeup on. I was just such a shadow of how I am now. But now, like, I, I've... I, I've worn white, you know, I've worn white dresses. I have a, a um I have a band that I wear sometimes, a hernia belt that goes over the two stomas because I have a prolapse of my ileostomy as well. So that kind of um that can make me have some issues with clothing, but not not the ureostomy. The ureostomy is fine, it's very cute looking compared to the ileostomy. So but I I, I, I love um I found myself over the over the years more comfortable in what I'm wearing it's it's I've realized what you know kind of I can wear the clothes that I always wanted to I can wear shorts I can there's um there's an amazing woman called I, let me see if I'm saying this right J Jolene Jolene oh um, yeah. She's yeah I can't remember was it Philip I can't remember her surname but she's an American um double ostrumate at two, uh, three years old I think from cancer and she's now f nearly 50 and she's amazing and she posts regularly in the double bagger group and it's she's just, a model as well yeah she's a model she's a runway model and you know she does catwalks and she's so inspiring you would never tell that she had two stomachs and she's really helped me I think like indirectly have the confidence to wear what I want to wear like when I went to the purple wings ball I just wore the white a white dress you know and even with the prolapse I still felt quite comfortable in it and I think it's it's finding again it's finding accept, acceptance in in you I think when you accept the stomas you kind of really everything sort of fits into place like when you you actually it's not about your friends or your family or your partner accepting the stomas it's about you accepting it and it's a journey it takes time it's like it's taken me like I probably would say about four years since I had my first one to actually accept them and, and to be comfortable with how I am now. And, you know, and st I have b good and bad days, but generally they're mainly good days now. It kind of, what you've just said kind of reminds me of um, the, ro I know you like Roald Dahl, the, 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 the twits one that everyone knows that I can never get right whenever I try to remember it. Um, I know my internet being slow. But the one about where if you're negative, it kind of shows, mm -hmm. and and when you're more positive, have it, have it, have it. You get more uglier, don't you? If it's if you're more negative. Yeah, if you if you accept it, you other people are more accepting of it. I think. Mm. Um. And. I found that with mine, it's like a filter. Like obviously, you've seen something I wrote today, and it's like a it's like it pushes all the crap and negative away. Um, the quote is, and it, and it just suits you. I'm gonna have to read it out because I know you like Roald Dahl. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on the face, and when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you can hardly bear to look at it. Which I do see a lot of people in the groups like that that can't accept themselves for who they are and the fact that their stoma, urostomy, colostomy, ileostomy, it doesn't matter which, has given them like a second chance at life. Mm -hmm. And you're definitely the second bit. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You, have, you could have a wonky nose, a crooked mouth, a double chin, stick out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they'll shine out of your face like sunbeams and you'll always look lovely. Not that you have. You know, a wonky nose, crooked teeth, or any of that. But um. I do have a bump in my nose. But I know I, I love I love that quote. And it, however, like I haven't always been this positive. Like I've been very two years ago when I had a, a pain medication addiction, and I just couldn't. I didn't want to be here before I had my steroid. Just with my superior catheter, I just didn't want to be alive. And so I've I think because I felt the desperations of not wanting to be here now I can see be grateful for what I have got in my life and what the stomas have given me you know now since starting the blog it's given me you it's given me the girls it's given me Steve it's given me so many different people you know Louise the double bag is all these everybody there's too many people to mention and I wouldn't have had that if I didn't have the stomas and who knows what my life would be like but it's 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 a journey and it's about accepting and I think it's about there's an element of I was very much 
in self-pity. I was very much poor me. I'm 28. I've got two bags. Um, you know, I didn't. I when I first had had both of them, I didn't think that there was anybody else like me. You know, I didn't even know that Facebook groups exist, existed. So I was doing this purely by myself. I was white knuckling it by myself, and I couldn't do it. I needed that support, and I think it's so so important to get that identification with any with your illness. You know, if you've got stomas with anything, mental health illnesses, anything, it's that identification is so important because without that, I wouldn't be where I am now, and I wouldn't maybe wouldn't have addressed issues that I addressed two years ago. And you know, yeah, I think it's it's important to 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 keep talking, to keep reaching out and asking for help and watching these things and educating yourself. And then over time, your attitude has changed. But whether you ask to me, the people that from what I've seen, especially the ileo conduit, a lot of people that have had it have said that they, they've they had it because um, if they've had it for, say, interstitial cystitis, overactive bladder, neurological conditions, um, there's quite a few, I can't remember saying, any, any sort of reasons like that, maybe um, possible birth defects, or if, if you've had, if you struggled with catheters, you struggled with superior catheters, you struggled with that element of your life. When they've had an ileal conduit, so many people have said their lives are, are changed for the better. So I've seen a, a far bigger difference in my life when I had the uostomy than when I had the ileostomy and I couldn't poop at all. You know, there was a, the, the superior life, just, it ruined me. And it was, there's a few people I'm supporting at the moment. We're trying to get them uostomy surgery because they're just, they're just not living it. And that, that loneliness, that kind of desperation and the pain that they're in emotionally, and physically, like I just never want to be back in that place again because it was just awful. And I'm grateful I'm not I'm not there anymore. And I'm I'm really grateful for my yours to me and and I I enjoy talking about it. I do people's heads and sometimes, but I enjoy talking about it. and raising yours to me awareness for me is my priority because we need more people. We need more yours to me bloggers to come and help me blog because I can't do it by myself. You know, we need more of a community now, and I think together then we can we can sort of go against the stigma and the taboos and because quite a lot of people who've got stomas don't know much about uostomies and we need to change that now. I didn't so know <laughs> I didn't know that there was even urostomies until I started researching want um to make my decision about having my ileostomy. Um oh, really? Yeah. Um I do think we should need we do need more people with urostomies in groups and blogging because they need their voices heard. I mean, when I do polls in the groups, I always add urostomies as well because everyone's voice is just as valid and just and should be heard, you know? Yeah. It's really easy to forget forget us and I think I very much in any articles I write, I kind of describe us like we're like the middle child of the ostomy family and we need to start stamping our feet a bit louder to be heard and, and I there was um I can't remember who it's by but there was um a survey being asked um by a company and in the in the in the company on Twitter they they didn't actually mention your ostomies they said ileostomy colostomy and other and I kind of pulled them on it because um, it's the only way we can actually start start kind of addressing it is by challenging people that maybe have haven't mentioned you was to me and eventually i'll i'll start challenging companies about the double bagger option in when you request samples you know because that hasn't been we're not really acknowledged really with many companies as a double bagger but i want to start with you was to me first and i just like to give a little mention um that there's an amazing charity called you was to me awareness and if you can go on go on their website it's um www.youostomyassociation.org and they help you can sign up you can sign up um i think it's 14 pounds the first year is free and then it's 14 pounds for the year and you get journals four times a year and they're really good and there's a lot of support and there's sometimes there's local meetups um at different branches and i think we need you ua needs more help as well and we need to get more more younger you to me to be part of ua because i think we need to hit a different generation so if anybody's out there that want, is interested in looking at ua or wants to raise some money for us that would be brilliant yeah um every little helps doesn't it to yeah. steal a first from tesco's because <laughs> you've been asked to um 
do the Twitter for the UA, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going in my weekend. I'm going up to Northampton. Um, the UA have got their U.S. Awesome Association. They call it a gala, and then they've got their AGM meeting on the Sunday. So I'm going up Friday. So that would be really interesting. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody, and I've got some ideas for next um like post um campaign like campaign and photo shoots and the next part of because the poster i did actually got quite a lot of coverage and i've got a daily mail article coming out soon and things are changing and now now's the time where i need more people to help me because i just can't do it myself and i we i'm so desperate i've been trying bugging so many people to to do start you asked me blogging because the more the more reach we have and the more voice we have by the, the more people that we get like just me isn't enough even with you girls are amazing and you support me so much but i need other yours to me to kind of help build an online community and online standing to help with to to raising up questions um stigmas and that kind of stuff do you use that just sounds so flat after what you just said but do you use all the different um products or do you use the same products have you got any products that are your particular favorites i know you don't have them with you right now but um so i, I use the so i use the the coloplast um products i really liked the oak med um micro skin is really good product like if they don't do it in convex but they do the micro skin they do flat based it is it's amazing it's literally like a second skin and a lot of people that have had a lot of problems with their stomas with retracting um i think with any leaks the the micro skin is a good so i, I quite like that um what other products i don't i don't usually use a adhesive remover so when i do my next um I don't actually use remover um, because I find that when I, if I'm not changing the bags at the same time, that if I use an adhesive remover, it goes onto the other bag and it peels off. So that's why I don't tend to use it because sometimes I have a lot of leaks in my ileostomy. So I don't want to use the remover and end up having to change because really you shouldn't change your urostomy after you've changed your ileostomy. You should always do the urine one first and then the ileostomy colostomy. So it's because of cross contamination. So I don't really use a spray. And um, what else do I like? Do I like to use? Um, I like my have. I used to use my Confiz band quite a lot um, back right at the beginning when I got it given to me. No, and I had Confiz knickers. What else do I use? Um, I think that's. I think that's it. I Vi Poo is my best friend. Like it really is. Because I find that the for me the ileostomy odor the smell is so much worse than the ileostomy and today, yesterday I ate some as part of the show we're doing the um, Mar Stomus Chef and we had asparagus and I thought right I'm going to make my my mum made me asparagus meal with salmon and mashed potato and fish is another re another reason that can make it smell really badly and it just just smell awful a like combination of fish and asparagus so I don't know which one caused it to smell worse to the asparagus or the fish but I for me I find that you asked me more of a concern if I'm around around anybody's house than so VIP is quite good there's there's some other sprays that I can use as well like the osteo mist is quite good um yeah but I do VIP VIP is quite a good product do you have you used it stuff I've used the happy flush I think oh okay the osteo mist I like the Osto drops better, but so does it work exactly the same for the urine then? Yeah, this this is a good question because I I Steve lent me some orange osteo mist and to put in my urostomy because I was complaining about the smell and I put the drops in and it was amazing. It was, for about three days the, I couldn't smell anything but orange osteo mist. However, there have been a few comments on the post that I put up that. Some some urologists have said has stomonists have said not to use the osteomist in the urostomy. I can't actually find out a reason. I've researched, I can't find a reason why. So I am gonna call my stomonists to ask because it'd be interesting to know. I think the reason why they say it is because some some of the bags trying to get it into the tube, then and they they they've got the is it the back flow um where they it doesn't flow backwards. I think that's why they may suggest not to use it. Um, 
but I need to I need to find out really. So I need to kind of research that and find out. But I couldn't find anything on the internet that says why you can't use it in the US to me. Um someone wants to know if the odor it says so the odor never smells of urine. So does it like smell like it would if you would go normally? No, it's a lot stronger. So because because they use a bit of your they use a segment of the ileum. Sometimes they may use a different part of the bowel, dependent on any other medical issues. But usually it's the ileum. They because they use that they have quite a lot of mucus is it already in the bowel. So when I have a urine, there's you can see threads of mu white clear mucus, and the smell is a lot stronger than when you normally go to the toilet. And that for me that's the, that's the hard that's the hardest. Sorry, my mum's just passed me I'm something. Watching it. Oh, my mum's watching it. She's put citrus in the spray would react to the ammonia in the wee. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right, I thanks, love mom. your mum. I love your mum. She's watching it. Um, yeah, I've totally lost what I said. Um, you but I will, find, I will find out. Yeah, I will. I will find out about the about the osteomyst because I don't want to recommend anything that that can affect. Um, but I suppose to me the smell is very strong because I know the ostomis you can spray it. it does say you can spray it in the air so that's one one way or or could you just use a happy flush like you would for your really ostomy and spray it on the water in the yeah toilet? I think I think it, yeah I think when I use the VIP I don't smell the urine so much but when I have it like at the moment I've got a kidney infection my smell is a lot stronger anyway and I kind of if when you attach to the night bag if you kind of pull it off quickly and you get a few drips onto the bed you find after a few days you can smell the urine so i kind of i smell my urine on me more than i do the ileostomy and that, that hasn't really got better in the two years it's a bit of a bugbear of mine but i'm finding ways like the vi poo helps and there's different ways that can help with the smell but but there's there's one lady she's a double bagger as well from canada and she hasn't had who since having a urostomy, the smell hasn't changed at all. So not everybody suffers with the odour increasing. Some people do. It's, it's the same with urine infection, urinary tract infections and um, urostomies, because some people haven't had any kidney infections or any sort of conduit infections, but other people have. So there's a big argument, and there was quite a good presentation by a consultant that said, like, why do some people get more infections than others? And it's... It's the same. The same goes with smell. So, just this is going to sound really stupid. But this is one of my questions, so it doesn't matter if it's stupid. It's no stupid question. The colour does it? Does the colour still get affected the way it normally would if you drink more certain things you eat or yeah. drink? And yeah, it's it's a lot more con. It's a lot more concentrated. The more the less the less you drink, the more concentrated it looks. Um, I'm now on antibiotics and mine has got a tinge of green too. There's an amazing, some people, right, it's called the purple bag syndrome, right? And I don't, I haven't, I don't know enough about it to explain, but I will do a little post about it. Is some, some people, because of an ingredient in the urine that only happens to some people, react to the bag and they end up having purple bags, which is quite, quite cool really but a bit it freaks some people out and there have been a few people in the group talk about the, the purple but the purple bag um scenario so that's quite interesting so i will i will research a bit more and then i'll write a post about it that sounds but really i think cool. it's to do with i think it's to do with some some people have a different ingredient in their in their urine and it just reacts and they just end up with purple bags that's really weird because i mean i remember when we did us uh, asked me bag roulette I think it was Louise she'd found that I think it was the sensor meals that something about the high hypercolid like can change the skin color slightly oh, really? it, like I think it's the convex but I'm sure she'll tell me at some point if I'm wrong um mm. but she definitely she did a post on her post but I think me I think it was the meals she definitely wrote about it um but the that must be just yeah. something to do with the way people react as well. Well, I don't. I, from what I remember, I don't think it's to do with the actual product. I think it's over all of the products. Like some people just end up having purple bags. So I need, I need to, I need to research a bit more into that because it's quite an interesting one to do for understanding your ostomies. 
but it's called the purple purple bag syndrome and it's either purple or a tinge of blue so oh, um that's really yeah, so cool. if anybody watching this has got has ever experienced that please message me because i'll love to learn a bit more and add you in my post um do you have any top tips if you had three top tips for living with your ostomy what would they be Ooh, three top tips make sure you change your night bag no more than they they advise five to seven days always take your nut your connectors with you into hospital and always have um your emergency supplies supplies on you and my third one would be um drink 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 and you know water you know a lot of people there is an argument over six to eight glasses whether it's tea and i suppose any fluid is good but really if you have a urostomy and you want to you don't want to end up in hospital with kidney infections because the more infections we have um because of how how our plumbing is all is all different the the more chances we can get of having kidney damage and kidney disease so i think it's really important to drink 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 and to keep your drinks up and for me i prefer frozen water so i'll put a water in the freezer and i'll i'll drink that and i i drink far more water if it's frozen than, or semi-frozen than if it was lukewarm so it's finding what works for you or adding a bit of lemon to it or you know i think it's just you it's, you almost need to get into the habit of drinking more because it will it will help you in the long term is that not kind of like a double-edged sword then with your really awesome the amount of water you drink because it will flush your electrolytes out yeah i think i'm a bit of a naughty patient really i should be drinking like diorolite st mark's but i don't and I, when i go into hospital then i get a hit a big hit of the, the um oh, what's it called the fusion the see yeah the hartman's of potassium potassium is the main one i get i think i'm very depleting potassium i think it's because of how much water i use so i should really i should drink a lot more salt um a lot more electrolytes because i think i suffer with low electrolytes a lot but i don't really do much about it so it's something i need to change but i don't when i when i was in when i had my uostomy surgery i was in hospital for three months and it was i was isolated stay i had c diff that was awful with nearly lost to me that was that was so fun and games like big night bag was like full two liters full every couple of hours with bright green um poo it was just horrible but i was isolated in that stay and during that stay i had a lot of um i had to drink a lot of st mark solution and i think i just struggled drinking it and i know it's it's almost like oh it's a bit psychosymptomatic but i just don't want to drink it, it just might takes me back to that time and that time was so awful i just don't want to drink that stuff so but i prefer st mark's than they like so it's really if i'm disgusting that's why it's horrible I, it's horrible and st mark's you can you can make you can make yourself you know you don't need to get the tubs but i bought t i had tubs and tubs back back of it with me and i because I, I was on tpn so i wasn't allowed to eat and my stone might after my ileostomy had been crazy with the c diff the app i think i had like 10 liters one day it was just mental like that i had to completely stop eating and get tpn and then then after after it went mental for about a month my stomach completely stopped working and then i then i wasn't allowed to eat and then i was just drinking st mark's solution and i just remember that all i was i was stuck in this isolated room not allowed to leave hospital just drinking this this st mark's but still even though like uh, that happened i still don't regret having my yours to me like i still think I, w I wouldn't have the life i've got now if i didn't have it well that's that's good um i completely i've been got 50 you. minutes already i know I've, i was gonna ask you something i completely just completely disappeared out of my head no that's really annoying do you have anything that while i think about think if i can remember my question silly baby brain um about your ostomies that about you in fact about your understanding your ostomies theory tell me about that i'll tell you about it mm -hmm. so okay so under, understanding your ostomies is comes out every friday so this friday i'm talking about the importance of your ph what your ph level should be with your urostomy so like i mentioned should be acidic which is different to the general population should be more alkaline urine so i'm um, talking about that this friday so every friday for 
I wanted to do for September, but to be honest, I have so much to talk about with you, Ostomies. I may extend it, go through October as well. So I'll see how how um, how it gets reacted, really. So it's it's just if you anybody's got anything they want me to discuss or would like to add anything to, or I, I would love some more help and some more input. Like I say, I would love for people to help me out. You know, so please message me on um, Rocking Two Stomers over Twitter, Facebook, my blog. Um, Instagram, although I don't use it as much. Um, anyway, and if if you can help me out, that that would be brilliant. Um, yeah, it's just to help help ostumates, general Joe blogs, and people with ostomies and new ostomate patients more about ostomies really, and to make more of a stand on the inter on the internet. There isn't if you type in ostomy, there aren't many pages. Kind of from a personal experience, there's a lot of products talk about but not actually from a personal experience so if we can try and change that that would be great that would be really good um and if anybody doesn't know rachel and i are co-hosts on the ibd and ostomy support show with louise from crohn's fighting natalie the spoonie mummy and steve our bag daddy um and we're live every thursday at 8 p.m um, gmt and we are also recorded, so if you miss it, you can catch up. And we have a YouTube channel. Just search the IBD and Ostomy Support Show. Um, and we talk about everything ostomies. And hopefully the more your ostomates we can get to watch, the more we can, like, find out about other people's experiences. Because um, Steve, Natalie, Louise and I all have ileostomies. So um, it would be really interesting not just for us, but for Rachel as well. And she can keep spreading her little your your me awareness flag. I think it's like a lot a lot of people like a lot of people have have come to me and have said they get put off watching who have a Eurostomy watching the show because it says IBD and Ostomy Sports Show, but it's important that we don't just talk about IBD, we talk about stomas for whatever reason. It just happens that our reasons, you know, my stomas weren't due to IBD. However, I do have colitis um diversion colitis and uh diverticulitis now but i didn't have my stomas for that and i think sometimes the name can put it off a little bit but it's we cover we cover whatever topic we talk about i do fly the flag for your ostomies and we'll we'll add from that perspective and a double bag of perspective so please catch us every thursday 8 p.m uh, the more the merrier and we've got live chat as well so yeah like questions um just a little shout out to richard because he's watching thank you richard. hi richard and graham um, for the oh. earlier graham's graham's our biggest fan i think one one of our biggest fans he is <laughs> he is and we love him he's amazing um but tomorrow if anyone is interested we are talking about healthy eating with a stoma and it can be, it's all stomas so obviously um rachel mentioned about fish and the asparagus and obviously they're quite classed as quite healthy food so if anyone with the ostomy wants to tell us what foods they struggle with either odor or color um because doesn't beetroot make it go pink it does yeah and you think you're hemorrhaging <laughs> the amount of times um, oh <laughs> so we'd love to hear more from like your ostomates side mm -hmm. of things really um and you can message myself at Colitis to Ostomy, Rachel at Rocking Two Stormers, Louise at Crohn's Fighting, and the Spoonie Mummy, which is Natalie, over all social media platforms. Because um, our inboxes are all open, all like all the time. And we'll always get back to you Great as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that's it. Thank you so I was much. Hoping, I, was, I was hoping we'd have hit an hour, but... I've... Well, four minutes. We, uh, I, I, so I thought it'd be ten minutes. I didn't realise I've been talking for this long. But thank you for, so much for inviting me to talk about your ostomies. And because I don't have much, I don't have a lot of confidence in doing my own videos. So you asking the questions is so much better than me doing it myself. So thank you for giving us the opportunity for your ostomies to have have a voice and to talk about understanding your ostomies. So thank you for that, darling. Mm -hmm. I love you. It's okay. Yeah, you too. So um, I will say good night 
from me and don't forget to catch the IBD and Ostomy support show tomorrow at 8 p.m. And and say goodbye to Rachel, my lovely friend. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Steffi. And yep, yeah, message me if you want anything I want to talk about or you have your Ostomy, just want to connect with anybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.